Well, good morning, church family. It's good to see everybody. If you visit her here today, I just want to let you know that we're going to be starting momentarily. Uh, if you need to use the restroom or grab some coffee, feel free to do so, and we'll come back in and we'll get ready for worship. So, happy Sunday. Good to see everybody. Welcome to Cornerstone. Thank you for joining us this morning. If you are here in person, please silence your cell phone and take your seat. For those online, check in with us by saying hello in the comments. And we ask everyone to check in on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and let your friends know that you are here worshiping with us this morning. Before we begin, we have a few prayer requests and information about community life at Cornerstone. Please keep the following in your prayers. Reese, a four-month-old, hospitalized with RSV. Judy's new great-grandson, Walter, is hospitalized in the NICU with health concerns. Kelly's father, Jim, has been placed in hospice. Kelly will be traveling this weekend to be with him. Mike and family as they mourn the death of Mike's brother, Richard. Robin's niece, Abby, who is battling cancer. Maurice and Karen Joe and family on the death of their nephew, Rick. And please keep everyone else in your prayers who needs prayer that was not mentioned this morning. As part of this year's generosity campaign, the 24-7 team will host a potluck supper at 5 p.m. on Saturday, October 23rd at Cornerstone. Entertainment will be provided by our own Alan Freeman, who will sing from a repertoire of standards and original gospel songs. Please RSVP by clicking on the link provided in the weekend update or going to the event on our website. For those without email or computer access, you may sign up on the bulletin board in the hallway across from the office. We look forward to seeing you. The United Methodist Men will present a trivia night on November 6th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Tickets are $15 per person with eight people to a table. There will be prizes for winners. Bring your own food. We will provide soda and coffee. All sales from tickets go to the Pavilion Fund. Please RSVP by clicking on the link provided in the weekend update or going to the event on our website. For those without email or computer access, you may sign up at the bulletin board at Sign Up Central across from the office. Cornerstone will offer carry-out Thanksgiving dinners on Sunday, November 21st. 
Dinners will include turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, dressing, corn, green beans, roll, and dessert with a suggested donation of $5 per plate. In order to get an accurate count, we will require reservation by November 7th. Please RSVP by clicking on the link provided in the weekend update or going to the event on our website. For those without email or computer access, you may sign up at Sign Up Central across from the office. Dinners will be available for pickup on November 21st between services. The cooks could use some muscle on November 18th and 19th, so if you can help, please contact the office. Join us on Sunday, November 7th from 1 to 4 p.m. at Mount Zion Cemetery in O'Fallon for Exploring Our Past slash Past, a cemetery open house. Come pay honor to the people who have and continue to direct and maintain the cemetery. Find sites of interest to our church and local history and pay your respects to those who have passed on and are buried at our cemetery, both known and unknown. Popcorn, cider, and a scavenger hunt for families will be available. We need volunteers for the Boy Scout Food Drive on Saturday, November 20th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sign up to serve a three-hour shift by clicking on the link provided in the weekend update or going to the event on our website or at Sign Up Central across from the office. Thanks for your help. Would you like to give online but not sure how? Use our QR code. Open the camera or the QR code reader on your phone. Aim at the QR code and click on the link that pops up at the top of your screen. This will take you directly to our Give Online website page. It's quick and easy. We appreciate your generosity as we expand our online and in-person ministries at Cornerstone. Jesus teaches it is better to give than to receive. If you would like to give a morning offering today, we have a few options. You may download the Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement app through the App Store or Google Play Store by searching for Cornerstone United Methodist Church, O'Fallon, Missouri. You can also give through our website by clicking the Give Online tab, our Vanco Electronic Giving, Online Banking, In-Person Offering Box, or by sending your check to Cornerstone through the U.S. Postal Service. Thank you so much for your generosity. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. This first song uh, has some great lyrics, and I hope you guys will join in singing with us this morning. Uh, one thing that I love about this song is that it's just talking about filling the space with God's presence and God breathing his presence on us always internally in us. And please just stand if you are able to. We're going to sing of those words this morning. God is always changing us, so let's sing together. a shaking, let hearts awaken, our God is moving, forever changing us. There is a trembling, there is revival, the sound of worship, so great and glorious. Holy Spirit, trembling there is revival the sound of worship so great and glorious
is good. Continue lifting your voices as we sing, sing of the victory that Jesus has given and offered each and every one of us today. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Good news right there. Oh, my God will never fail. Lift your voice. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, oh. power in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. And I'm not backing down from any giant. Cause I know how this story ends. Cause I know how this story ends. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Turned it for good, and you take the enemy meant for evil, and you turned it for good. You turned it for good. Sing that one voice, church. Come on. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turned it for good. You turned it for good. What the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it. see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord and I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord and I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs
Lord, we pray. Dear God, you are everything to us. We just thank you so much for the victories seen and unseen today. We thank you for all that you are doing in our lives, the lives of the church. As the day goes on and we encounter any challenges or busyness, help us to understand and put you first above everything else. Give us the grace and wisdom that we need to serve you and to be a blessing for those that you send our way. We thank you for the songs we we just sang. Thank you for the message, the good news we're about to hear, and most importantly, for your son, Jesus. It's in his name we pray all these things and all God's people said, amen. Go and have a seat. Help me thank our praise team for leading us in worship today. Good morning, Cornerstone. I'm Mike Gillen, pastor here at Cornerstone United Methodist Church. So our guests this morning, both here in the sanctuary and online, grateful to have you with us here today. I hope you discover God's grace being made real to you this morning. Our 24-7 generosity team is a team that leads us to live better by faith, and it encourages us to be a part of the ministries of the church more and more, has been leading us in a generosity campaign this month, which reminds us that Cornerstone is our light that shines in our lives and leads us to shine in the world. Each week, we've had a different generosity video that guides us to think about how we can participate in the ongoing work of this church. The, this month of October, we've had a couple of different events that have focused on getting us together and celebrating being able to get together, get together again. And coming up uh, in the, uh, this Saturday, we have another event that we've already advertised, the potluck dinner, but we've got a video that lets you know a little bit more about what that is going to be about. So watch this generosity video with me. Hello. Hi, Pat. It's Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. What's up? You do know that October is Generosity Month. Yes, and Ward and I have been praying and considering what gift to give next year. Well, the 24-7 team is going to have a potluck the 23rd, which is Saturday. Oh, that would be so much fun. You know, we haven't had a potluck in a long time, and I'm sure everyone's looking forward to it. It begins at 5 o'clock. Just think of all the yummy food and desserts that are going to be there. And new recipes. You know, Marilyn, we have to remember to use disposable pans for our food. The church will provide the serving utensils, you know, COVID guidelines. Speaking of new recipes, I can't wait to bring my new broccoli recipe. It is awesome. Did you know that Alan Freeman is going to be providing the entertainment and singing for us after the supper? I've heard him sing. He is fantastic. The church will be live streaming Alan's performance at 5.30. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, the people that can't come to the potluck can listen to Alan as they're eating that meal. The church would like to, for us to RSVP because they would like to have a rough count of how many are coming. I can do that, and I'm sure they won't turn anyone away. Well, I need to be heading home. Home? Where are you, Marilyn? I'm at church. Where are you? Church. I'm looking forward to the potluck and hope you are too. Please, RSVP, let us know you're going to be there. And if you're not going to be in person, I hope you'll plan on at 5.30 watching the 
the special concert that Alan Freeman is going to, to bring to us. It's a way for us to celebrate how Cornerstone is our light that shines Christ's light in our lives and leads us to live better by faith. You may not know who Alan Freeman is, and so today I want to invite Alan to come and join us for worship and to, to lead in a, a song that we can help appreciate what the gift of God has done for Alan in his life. So, Alan, welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. strength for the work you'd have me do. Thine is the glory. Mine is to worship you each day through. Now and forever. as there was shown when Jesus died he came to this earth to prove what we are worth that our sins be reconciled so what should I bring to the throne of the king who would do this for me Nothing less than my I have answered his call. Lord, I give you everything. Thine is the kingdom. Mine is the place you have blessed me to use. Thine is the power. Mine is the strength. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Lord, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now and forever, praising you, Lord, because I love you. you.
God bless you. Thank you so much. Pastor. Alan, thank you so much. God bless you too. Look forward to Alan leading us in worship in that concert coming up uh, this Saturday. Hope that you'll RSVP and look forward to, to have him lead us in that special time. You know, I'm reminded through our generosity campaign of just how important it is to be together, be brought together through God in worship and ministry and service. And so I'm excited about this Saturday's event where we continue to celebrate what God is doing as we celebrate Cornerstone, this light of, of yours and mine together. The scripture for this morning speaks to us about how God is our light and seeks to be a light that shines on our way, but also reveals to us who we're meant to be. Hear these words of life from Isaiah 60. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the noon shine on you, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Then all your people will be righteous, and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands, for the splendor of my, for the display of my splendor. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, this is a message series titled, Your Light. The idea behind the message series is that each of us has a light within us that that reflects the the light of God and the grace of God, and our lives are meant to be a, a reflection of this eternal, everlasting light for others to experience, to bring others to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Jesus says to us, you are the light of the world, and so each of us is being called to remember our lives matter and our lives are reflecting a light that others can see and need as they discover who they can be by getting to see the faith in us. Today I want to talk about God in focus. The scripture for this morning is a lesson for us, reminding us that God's light is a light for our way. It leads us to respond to God in ways that gives God our time, our talents, and our resources for the work God is doing in our lives. Light is a gift from God. And it's crucial to us understanding our place in the world. I was watching this show the other day on one of the streaming networks, and two celebrities were talking about something that I'd I'd never heard people really talk about quite like this before. They asked the question, are you a sunrise or a sunset kind of person? You ever thought about this before? Are you a sunrise or a sunset kind of person? Which do you prefer? Maybe you like a good sunrise, like, like this one here. Yeah, you can tell it's a sunrise because the sun is rising in the east, right? <laughs> I said that to the uh, people preparing the slides this week, and they just looked at me. I thought it was really funny, you know, but you can, you can tell, can't you? It's clearly a sunrise. Nothing like a sunrise, is it? Or maybe you love a sunset, like this one here. You can tell it's setting in the west, right? So I... I told them I would know the difference because of that, and so I really appreciate them finding two images that clearly are sunrise, sunset, east, west. What is it about these these moments that happen every day that for us are so important, are inspirational, are, are, are a unique and brilliant part of life? Now, for some of you, I threw in one other idea, though, because I know some of you, and some of you prefer a bright moonlit night like like this one right here i mean you would just you just don't really wake up till it's till it's dark outside and the moon is out i was just talking to someone a moment ago who is retired and has been retired for many years but but she has always been a nighttime person it gets to be about nine o'clock at night and she's just really waking up her husband will look at her funny when she says well i think this is a great time to wallpaper what do you think he's like man i'm so tired Maybe you're a, a moonlit night kind of person. I was watching these two celebrities talking, and they're talking about which they prefer, a sunrise or sunset. And one of them, a comedian, said something I thought was so funny. He said, I feel a sunset is a lazy man's sunrise. <laughs> to, me, to me, that is hilarious. I think a sunset is a lazy man's sunrise. I think about that all the time. The, then, the, then, then he said, you see a sunrise, and it's so great to be at the, in the world, and you're at the first step of the day. 
And then you see everything you like. And then the other person said, but, but you know, the sunset is so obviously the end, but everything comes to an end. So if you get to actually talk about the end the next day, then you're not dead, and that's really great. That's how they justified sunset, which to me was not really a good argument for why you would love a sunset over a sunrise, because you know you're not dead when you get to, I don't really, I didn't get that idea, but I can say this. I love sunrises and sunsets. This morning I got up early, like I do every Sunday morning, got my coffee and actually uh, opened up the, the patio door to be able to look out and see the, the brilliant colors of the sunrise this morning. Maybe you have someone in your family who loves a good sunset and you're driving along and they're in the back seat or, or maybe they're in the house but in another part of the house and they, they say, look at this beautiful sunset, you've got to look at it. And so everybody rushes out of the house to the front porch to, to look out at the sunset or, or, or slows the car down a bit to be able to see the brilliance of the sunset. We all have folks who love sunrises or sunsets. And, and we, when we really think about it, probably prefer one over the other for some reason or other. The sunrise, sunset, moonlight all highlight the importance of light in our lives. So much of our human lives revolves around natural light and the patterns of day and night that define what it means to live in this world. We really pay attention to the light around us. And so much of our life is defined and filtered through the necessary light that is so much a part of this world. Today's Bible lesson teaches us that God is meant to be our eternal light. That God wishes to be a part of our lives in a way that transforms how we see. Not so much how we see with our physical eyes, but how we, with our imagination, with our heart, with our mind, how we see our place in this world and the way our lives can be lived. Again, Isaiah says, speaking for God, for the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. I want to think about this one sentence a little bit more because Isaiah is trying to reshape how we think. The Bible is intending for us to truly believe these words. And here in Missouri, where O'Fallon, Missouri is where Cornerstone is, we believe you don't just say you believe something, you show us, you live it. And so the Bible is meaning for us to live out these words today. What does it mean for the Lord to be our everlasting light and for God to receive glory from us? What does it mean for us to, to see this light from God as everlasting for us? Well, it could mean this, that God becomes the source of spiritual direction for you and me. God becomes the source of spiritual direction for you and me. Now, I would suggest to you this, that there are a lot of things happening in the everyday world of sights and sounds that actually offer us spiritual direction, and we don't realize it. That our spirits are being directed in different ways towards different loyalties, towards placing our confidence in different sources and individuals and organizations and ideas and those, those ideas that lead us in spiritual ways have no place in God's world, at least in God's eternal light. That there are so many ideas and, and battling uh, efforts to grab our attention and grab our, our desires and grab our focus that have nothing to do with who God wants us to be. One of the songs we sang today just a moment ago talks about how there is this evil intention to create weaponry that actually destroys who we're meant to be. And I want to suggest to you today that so much of our spiritual direction is coming from sources that are not connected to God in any way. Many even claiming to be God-inspired. And yet, I think we'll see that the spiritual direction we receive does not direct us 
to this everlasting light. How can God become the source of spiritual direction for you and me? We begin to trust in God, trust in these teachings, and it leads us in a direction. So what does it mean for God to be our everlasting light? It could mean this, that we develop spiritual eyesight that sees God is our source for life. So I I think that one of the most important parts of understanding how light functions is that it helps us to physically see. And I want to suggest that in the same way, God's everlasting light is meant to give us spiritual eyesight that helps us to understand that God is our source for life. And it's important to understand this because we can give a lot of different people, organizations, movements, ideas, credit for giving us a life. But the scripture is saying to us today that God wants to be the one whom we give credit to for helping us see what our life is really all about and how we're able to live from day to day. God is aiming to redirect our spiritual sight so that we see that God is the source for our life each day. Changing what we see as being the source of our life changes then our loyalties and where our confidence lies and the direction we take in life each day. What does it mean for God to be our everlasting light? Isaiah challenges us to place our trust in the never-ending love and life of God. God becomes our eternal light and life. This is the challenge for us to say we are going to redirect how we understand our life, how we see ourselves, how we choose to live in terms of a direction in life so that God becomes our eternal life and light, the source through whom we trust each day. Again, Isaiah says, for the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. You know, this is an interesting phrase, God will be your glory. What does it mean for God to be our glory? It's a phrase we don't often use. It's a way of talking we don't really talk about much. We don't talk about glory or glorifying others so much anymore. What does it mean for God to be our glory? I think it means to bring glory to someone or something is to bring honor, focus, and praise to them. So we're being directed to understand that our life can honor and focus others on and praise God. That maybe all the time we're doing this, maybe all of the time our lives are intentionally and unintentionally bringing honor, focus, and praise to someone or something. I think about how often we are being directed To understand it should be me first, over and above anyone else. How so often we are encouraged to advocate for our personal desires and wishes and to profit from this world first and foremost, and we fail to understand that this world is temporary, that the light that shines on us is for us a temporary light in this world of sights and sounds. And yet, we are constantly striving, constantly making every part of our day focused on ourselves or someone else who wishes for us to honor them, to glorify them, to praise them. What does it mean for God to be our glory? It means we make honoring God, living for God, The most important thing. Now, I I was trying to figure out this week as I was getting ready for this message, could I say something that really makes people angry? But it's one of those things where it sneaks up on you this week. So you don't get mad right away, but by the end of the week, you're like, man, that guy made me mad. I thought, wouldn't it be kind of cool to sneak up on you like that? Because so much of the stuff that makes me angry right then, on TV, someone in my life, something I do, Often the case. I wonder if I simply suggest to you that we are meant to make honoring God and living for God the most important thing in our lives. I wonder if that would do it. 
Like, ah, it's not any big deal, but think about what's most important in our lives. What we're taught should be most important. Think about all the things that should be the number one thing in our life. None of those ideas, for the most part, have any connection to the Bible. Think about a funeral you might have gone to. He really loved the cardinals. She was a a tremendous cook. It was the most important thing in her life. By the way, that's a close second to God, in my opinion. So I'm not (laughs) denigrating being a great cook or cooking anything great, nothing like that. Their job was everything to them. If it weren't for their family, they would have had nothing. So often, statements like this are made at the end of people's lives. Even more importantly, in the day-to-day life we live in, we are challenged to put so many different people and objects and goals and institutions in first place in our lives. There's a constant competition in our world to try and figure out who can or what can take priority in our lives over everything else. And you know how Americans demonstrate what's most important. It's how we use our time, and spend our money. What if, what if we decided today to do something really radical and we would take the Bible's words, the leadership of the Spirit of God, the reflections of Jesus Christ in our world and life and 2,000 years of work in the church and we make honoring God, living for God the most important thing, what would happen? We would then understand what it means for God to be our glory. Our human struggle finds its source in a confused, temporary identity. We are made to serve God. This is what it means to be part of God's family, to be part of God's people, to be part of God's kingdom. I remember when I was in college, I went to college at what's now called Truman State University. It was Northeast Missouri State University when when I was there. And And I remember as a young philosophy student, philosophy and religion student, thinking to myself, I think I'd like to live my life without holding on to labels. I was thinking about in different areas, like academically, there are different kinds of, like you're this kind of person or you're that kind of person or you're in this group or that group. Or in religious circles, you're this way or you're this person or you're on this side or you're on this side. It seemed like... Uh, we, it seems like human beings are very limited in what we think about. We only have two hands, and apparently we try to lump the whole world into two sides. It makes me worry we haven't thought much. These are the only levels we got? Right hand, left hand? What about both hands? No, you can't have that label. That makes sense. Ambidextrous. There is no ambidextrous party, by the way. Isn't that weird? Labels. I thought to myself as a young college student, I would like to go into the world and minister without being hindered by labels, without being categorized in such a limited way that someone else could say to me, I know you completely because you are, and then they identify me by a label. I remember at, uh, at Northeast Missouri State University in Kirksville, Missouri, uh, meeting a, a young woman. I met a lot of young women, but most of them didn't talk to me. But this one, I guess, felt sorry for me. You know, I'm an awkward philosophy and religion major, and she thought, well, I could do something with this guy. I could make him into something. Uh, we've been married 27 years. I think she still wonders, it's going to happen one day, I think, that it will, I can make something in this guy one day. But one thing I found out about this woman who's now Mrs. Gillen is that she was from uh, South City in St. Louis. And that meant that I had a choice to make in my life. I could either, as a, a kid from the Kansas City area, either continue to root for the Kansas City Royals or I could understand that if I was really, you know, going to hop into the same boat as this wonderful woman, and live my life with her, that I'd have to be rowing in the same direction that she was rowing in. That was in the direction of the St. Louis Cardinals. So I had to be willing to be labeled a Cardinals fan. 
Our human struggle finds its source in confused temporary identities all the time, I tell you. But I found out that when the Royals and Cardinals play in interleague games that I instinctively root for the Cardinals now. So there are some labels I just couldn't avoid. I found that so many labels, though, in our world only intend to divide us up, to diminish someone for our gain, to pit us against each other, to divide rather than build up and strengthen. The Bible speaks to us about different ways to label ourselves, and these labels connect to who we are, tell us who we are, create for us an identity. And the, today, the, the prophet Isaiah wants us to move away from confused, diminished, divided, temporary identities, and to move towards the true identity that you and I and all of the world is meant to have, and that is we are made to serve God. We are made to be part of God's family. We are meant to be God's people, to have citizenship in God's kingdom. And you name anything else in this temporary world, and it is meant to be secondary to these eternal labels that reflect the everlasting light of God and lead to bringing glory to God. God creates us in order for us to identify ourselves as God's children, first and foremost. The great challenge we have is that we stray from that at every turn. Let me give you an example. So after church today, we could go from all saying, yes, we're all God's children. We're going to honor God and serve God. And then we get out to the parking lot and we begin to talk about where should we go for lunch because suddenly the real world hits us and we realize, let's, let's prioritize for real now, right? And so there's some kinds of people that are fast food kinds of people. That's the group they belong to. And there are other people that want to sit down for a meal. And there's other people that want to kind of in between. And the great challenge is to be able to get into a car and all agree, right? And that's where the battle begins. And then the identifiers, the labels really start to take us over, We start listening to the radio or the TV, or we have a conversation with someone at the place we go to eat, and suddenly we're talking about something that grabs our attention and stirs our emotions up, and we want to prove that we're right and they're wrong, and so we say, the Cardinals should not have fired that guy. If you're not in St. Louis right now, the Cardinals, St. Louis Cardinals fired the manager. It's a big deal for some people. The rest of the world doesn't seem to know, but that's beside the point for us in St. Louis. And so you could then create a conversation that could lead to a real argument. And suddenly you've lost your identity as God's children, and you've claimed to be something more important, and you aren't. God creates us to identify ourselves, first and foremost, as children of God. And this is a way for us to recognize God is always nurturing us, working in us. God's grace is always going before us, making us into the people we're meant to be. Again, Isaiah 60 says, They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands for the display of my splendor. Why were you born? And you can say, well, my parents met in biology class at Warrensburg. And no, that's the mechanism You were created and sustained, promised to be redeemed and brought into eternity, moved from a temporary state into an eternal one. What's the purpose of your life? Last week, I received a a letter from someone who said, thank you for voicing what I've been thinking for so long. This has been an ongoing theme in some of my messages, what I'm about to say, and that is that right now you may think your life has not meant that much. You need to hear the scripture speak to you. The reason you are is because God has planted you, is nurturing you with eternal hands, with an eternal light that is causing you to have that opportunity to reflect the splendor of God, the glory of God in your life. Your life matters. Someone just said to me a few moments ago, I was with a group of people the other day, she said, and all of them were such strong women of faith. And she said, I felt like such an utter failure, such a hypocrite. And I said, listen, you need to to take a break from it. Give yourself a little grace because 
I, I told her, I've been a pastor a long time and I've never had anybody in the church who's perfect yet. I keep waiting for the perfect church member and it's just not happening. In fact, I am not yet perfect either. I know it's hard to believe. And I said to her, you need to understand that you're measuring yourself by the wrong, wrong standards. Isaiah 60 gives all of us the same standard. We are all planted by God. We are growing through the nurture of God's work in us, through the light that shines upon us, in order not for us, but for God to receive glory. We become who we are created to be as we see our lives are not for our own glory or profit, that we are meant to be in service to God. Maybe this is the place that will get you mad this week, by the way. There we go. I knew there was something crazy I could say that just would, would uh, connect you to some weird label. You know, you name the label that fits in religious circles, and now you can put me in one of those. And if I say this just right, I can make just about everyone ticked off sometime this week as you think about this. My understanding of what the Bible is saying to us is that we are created not for our own benefit, but for God's. Not to benefit someone else in our lives, but for God. To work with God, to be God's partner in the divine work God is doing, to bring the grace, the reflected glory of Jesus Christ, the eternal light of heavenly life into this world. And we do that by understanding our primary identity is to be that as a servant of God. This is who you and I are created to be. And when we strive and struggle to try and get more for ourselves or to somehow make someone else happy with us or to fulfill some kind of label that we've clung to that is earthly and temporary and only given light by the sun or the moon, we fail to grasp what this life is meant to be about. So what do we do this week with all this? How do we go from this moment to connecting the Bible into our everyday life? First, in daily prayer this week, offer your life to God. Say, God, today I realize my life is a gift from you. Shine your light on my way. Help me to see what you want me to do and say. How would your world change? How would your vision for yourself change if this were the, these sentences were ones you said each day this week? And then each day this week, realize everything you do and say can potentially bring honor and glory to God. Reflect God's everlasting light in the good you do. Understand that the good you do is really being empowered by God anyway. You're just the the vessel, the servant of God. So take time to see a sunrise this week. Embrace the new day as a gift from God. And then look at the sunset and see it's a, a magnificent masterpiece of, of God reflecting that from the beginning to the end, God is there. Maybe even enjoy the moonlit night. Oh, by the way, this is a generosity campaign. That means I am encouraging you to give money to the church. I believe in there's, a, there's a, a particular city in America that is this terrible tradition or reputation, rather, for uh, voting early and voting often. So I want you to, I would encourage you to give early and give often. Consider how Cornerstone is a reflection of God's everlasting light for your life. Be in prayer about the way you're leading, being led by God to commit to supporting Cornerstone in 2022. There I put in a little plug for uh, the money part of it. Uh, uh, I mean it, by the way. I really hope you will give to the church and that you'll be praying for how you can support the ministry of this church. The only reason I want you to do that is because I really believe that since 1807, we've sought to be a light for the world, a light for each of you. Whether you're in this room or you're online watching right now, Cornerstone, this light of yours and mine reflects the light of Jesus Christ to us, and to the world. We're brought together because of this eternal light, and we're given the opportunity to receive and embrace the true purposes we're meant to have. So today, let's make this the beginning of a week where we are praying with God about how we can bring glory to God, 
how our lives can matter as we serve God each day, how God will give us that spiritual direction to do and say what honors God. Let's pray together. God, what is it you want us to do today, tomorrow, and the next day? How can, with our time, our talents, and our resources, can we give everything to you and make you what matters most? God, you are our source of light and life. And you're meaning for us to reflect that we're your children, that we're part of your people, that we're citizens in your eternal kingdom. Help us each day this week, God, to be conscious, aware of your presence with us and to look for those ways you're lighting our way and leading us to do and be your children. Now, God, remind us of what it means to be your people. Teach us to pray as we remember your son's prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's been a blessing to be with you today. I hope that this is the beginning of a, of a week in which you discover that the light of God, the eternal light of Christ is shining in you and that you offer that light and grace to others as well. Be blessed. Be a blessing this week. Amen. I thought someone was behind me. What do you say? We should sing, shouldn't we? Sounds like a good idea. All right. Yeah, let's lift it up. All right. It has been a great day of worship. So I invite you to please stand as we lift up the Lord's name one more time and sing together. Slowing down, not growing the cold. In a quench of a flame that keeps burning brighter. A love that's blazing like the sun. For who you are, what you've done. And as the fire is raging on, so your flame. Comes my song, the whole earth spilled with the glory, Lord. Angels and men adore, creation longs for what's in store. May you be honored and glorified, exalted and lifted high. Let your feet and live my life From the ends of the earth to the heights of heaven Your glory, Lord, is far and wide Through history you reign on high From the depths of the sea to the mountains Silent. Your power, Lord, it knows no bounds. A higher love cannot be found. But so let the universe proclaim your great power and your great name. Just a man of the world, and creation loves the world.
great to worship with you. As you leave today and each day of your week, as you wake up, I want you to start off your day by saying, how can I give glory to God? What do I need to do? What do I need to change to give God all the glory? You become closer with him and it'll help remind you that you're loved by him. So have a great week and stay well and we'll see you next Sunday, everybody. The whole earth is filled with your glory, Lord. Angels and men Creation longs to watch this storm. May you be.